Hey guys, what's up today? How's it going? I wanted to just say thank you guys so, so, so much for your love and appreciation. We got like 40 plus new subscribers to the channel, so thank you, thank you. I love how you guys really appreciated everything, and so thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> so today I wanted to talk to you guys about face. Face work, another way to put it would be just our external sense of self and how this affects us as a person. So I took a class last semester called Communications Theories, and I think that it was the most wonderful, mind-boggling, and expanding class I've taken since astronomy. Uh, the professor, Corey Anton, um, I'm gonna say his name because he does have a YouTube channel, which you guys should completely check out. His works are just beautifully amazing. If he didn't have a channel, I wouldn't say his name, you know, privacy and all that, but no. Go check out his stuff. His works are super beautiful. He was taught by a certain Irving Goffman. I feel like a lot of people talk about face and saving face. Irving Goffman wrote a piece that really illustrates exactly what it is, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys today and kind of broaden it to how it affects us on a daily basis. So Irving Goffman wrote a piece called on face work, which completely outlines all of the points in which uh, we humans protect our faces, protect other people's faces. He uses the word defend and protect, where we defend our own face and we protect others. The common saying, saving face, is a perfect example of what Irvin Goffman's article on face work is all about. So outside of saving face, another large part of what we do in life is create one. And this includes things like the cliques we choose to hang out with in elementary school, middle school, high school. What I think is like a large maybe not issue or problem, but a large thing that is happening today is that people create a face and are like extremely defensive of it and put up walls and barriers to other ideas and notions. And when putting this idea towards like marketing businesses and uh, shopping from the consumer's end, I think in a very large way that businesses exploit this high value that we put on our sense of face. You know, in public relations, the face of a company would be its corporate image. And while we don't really see this as a face of a company, we do in their sponsors, pretty much. We do in the people they choose to be the face of the company. One example I can think of is music artists. That would be the best example. They are their own brand, their face is their brand, but in a large way, everyone expects them to stay the same and keep the same exact face because that's what they want. Like when Hannah Montana became Miley Cyrus, everyone pretty much freaked out because she had a completely different face on. And everyone was like, how are you such a different person? But really, it's just that we have multiple senses of self. We just externalize only one at a time. So Irvin Goffman goes through what he calls certain lines, high lines and low lines. And to put this more simply, we as people hold our face up to a certain uh, pedestal, we'll say. We'll, we'll put our face on a pedestal uh, when we're in front of people we want to impress. Like if we're in a place where 
everyone's all fancy and you know like a wedding uh you want to be your best sort of self and so you're you put on your bestest face but say you are just online and you are not even in front of the people you're talking to and maybe they're complete strangers that you'll never meet or hear from ever again you almost don't have a face in this scenario. I'm pretty sure this is what uh, Goffman calls the low line. I can't remember exactly. But when you don't have a face, you don't really hold yourself to any sort of uh, moral code or ethical code of conduct or social etiquette uh, line of thinking. And this is where we can turn into nasty people. This isn't the sort of thing I'm talking about, or that I wanted to talk about today exactly, but that is a sort of ethical situation in where people kind of lose their sense of face in whoever they're talking to. I think that because um, I'm reading a lot of Nietzsche right now, I would say that people with weak wills have a loose sense of face and can switch back and forth from different ones fairly easily. But then someone with a strong will, uh, a strong sense of face, can hold their, their own self really easily and be their truest self and their a singular face to whomever they're talking to. One thing that I do want to say about the, about the Goffman on face work is his um, defensive and protective lines. I want to go through it almost like verbatim what's in my notes from school because I think it's really interesting uh, when you kind of apply this to who we are and who we like know as other people. Defensive face work is when you're saving your own face and this is what we would call self-respect and when we're saving our own face it's because we value it. Um, this is versus being completely shameless. A perfect example that just came to mind would be like someone just farting or burping just out loud willy-nilly or someone walking around with like super duper greasy hair. Pretty much anyone just being gross in public doesn't hold their face to a high value and they're fairly shameless. And then protective work, protective face work, is when you're saving other people's faces. And this is being considerate, considerateness. I feel like there's a lot of easy examples that people could think of, like when someone else burps in public, you don't just be like, uh, excuse you. <laughs> Um, no, you just kind of ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. But anything embarrassing, you would just kind of ignore it to be considerate. The opposite of this would be heartless. I just think the shameless and heartless uh, oppositions to the defensive and protective are very interesting when you put them all four together. Yeah, I think we have to at least talk about that a little bit because when businesses use their power over us normal folk to have a successful revenue and profit, uh, they look to psychology. Something interesting, they look to cult leaders and people who are charismatic leaders particularly the bad ones because they have had the most success in gaining control over people with weak wills. Businesses, uh, politicians, the government in advertising, marketing, everyone wants to look at these awful leaders to uh, see just exactly how they were able to take over countries or entire large groups of people. 
One large project that I did last semester was on a company called Lularo, which by now I think is probably stale news, but it would be interesting to do a full video on them. But there are other companies that are more widely known, like Supreme, who have exorbitantly large prices for like the silliest things, like a, a headband or an umbrella or a belt. That could be easily a hundred to five hundred dollars for no apparent reason other than it yells supreme. And the reason why I think this is an exploitation on our faces is because they built up such a wide or they built up such a large value on their brand that people who wear it think they are more valuable. They add value to their face and they think, oh my gosh, I'm more valuable now. When in all reality, they're not. But to some other people, they are. Like, to other people with weak wills, they think, oh my gosh, they're wearing Supreme. They're more valuable than I am. And... This exploitation is almost a perpetual, like, cycle where businesses almost just have to put just a little sprinkle, a little sprinkle of I'm a hype brand, and they, they boom themselves up. They make themselves just expensive, only available to the rich people or the wealthy, and then... People who are of the higher middle class start to buy it, and then it goes and trickles down, and people want to buy it more and more and more. And then suddenly, obviously, this uh, has an end point where the lowest of the people in, like, what's it called? There's the working class, and then there's the, the actual, like, low class. But I'm pretty sure there's even one below that. But I don't know if you guys know... But there's, like, Dolce and Gabbana in the Salvation Army. And for some reason, I don't see it all that valuable. <laughs> and I still see it, like, uh, Kim Kardashian or something wearing it. And I'm all like, you know that's in thrift stores, right? But, like, that's me applying value because of where it is and the price it is. Like, that's the exact... Uh, motion of the system that our psychologies are supposed to um, communicate with, pretty much. Uh, but I guess a lot of people don't realize that everyone wears Dolce & Gabbana, to which I'm pretty sure it's them. It might be like Louis Vuitton or something, but it's that uh, like brown on brown, kind of like houndstooth pattern. I don't know. Anyways... I don't know if you guys know, uh, but it was like two Christmases ago, I'm pretty sure, where right before Christmas, Apple made their own memes on their Apple earpods and sent it out into the internet abyss. And <laughs> this was their marketing ploy of creating the hype, the creating the secret exploitation of these are popular, these are what rich people have, these will make you look super cool, and they're gonna be super freaking expensive because only those types of people are gonna buy them. And everyone was laughing at these, like, oh, ha ha, only douches wear uh, ear pods. But then they're all like, oh, I want to be a douche. I want to be a hype beast. And now everyone owns them, or like, I'd say at least... 44% of my school wears earpods. But I just thought it was very, very interesting the way they created the face, they uh, exploited the face of the people. There's this weird trickle-down system of people wearing, wanting very expensive items. Um, you wouldn't expect people to be wearing Supreme on a college campus. Uh, that's where I am often. Um, but I see it from time to time. And I think, 
Do you not have debt? Do you not have student loans? I don't like it. I, I, I don't like the fact that businesses can create their hype with the fact that they know that they're using the same tactics that bad people do. I'm trying to think of an example of a tactic. Oh, <laughs> freaking Lularo. I studied them for a whole semester. So Lularo, who I had a whole semester's worth of a project on, they exploited their customers by having like a $40 t-shirt or $40 leggings. Um, and they were apparently, I never felt it, but I have felt very soft clothes. Buttery soft is the words that almost every person uses. And because all of these clothes fit so perfectly well, but they exploited the love of comfort and the love of wanting to be comfortable in your own skin. No, they exploited this by having their prices set ridiculously high. And the craziest part is that this was an MLM or pyramid scheme or Ponzi scheme where the women also had to buy them to resell them, but the startup cost was pretty, 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 pretty high. And so the, the revenue margins were very small, but these women loved the clothes so much. And then one marketing tactic they used was creating the need for a collection. They post things like, show me your collection, or just be like, look at how many leggings I have. How many do you have? And people would be like, oh my goodness, I need more. I need all of them. Definitely go listen to the podcast, Sounds Like MLM, but okay. Their first two episodes are really beautiful with full hour interviews with two LuLaRoe consultants, and it's amazing. But these guys were... All of the Lularo consultants were just taken advantage of, and it was really disastrous. But it all started with, they just wanted to be comfortable, wear modest, beautiful clothing that was comfortable. And the woman who was in charge of Lularo was like, awesome, you're gonna pay loads of money for my amazingly comfortable clothes. And they did. They really did. Because they formed an amazing family and a lot of bonds between the girls, and they were all pretty much best friends, I think that was one reason why this business kind of exploded. All the love involved in the parties and the having new gal pals, um, that leads to a lot of dopamine and serotonin and pretty much... It becomes your new u utopia and you can't get out of it and that's why MLMs uh, attract so many women but that's a whole nother topic um, I'm just saying there's so many ways to exploit one's face if it's a if it's a loose face if they have a weak will a uh, will to power as Nietzsche puts it and I just I almost want to like make them feel better but I don't know how I don't know who to talk to, to to make the whole world feel better and say look you don't need oh I know freaking Macklemore said it exactly right $50 for a t-shirt that's whack I know that's not his exact words but like he tried to show everyone that the system's rigged. You're just buying it to save your face. That's it. But maybe that's enough on this topic. My timer says I've been going on for 40 minutes. I wonder how accurate that is. Okay, um, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. I really love you guys, and I had loads of fun making this and the last one, and... Hopefully I'll hear from you guys again. I had a lot of fun talking to you in the comments and 
uh, I would know I wasn't able to get back to every single comment and I don't um, exactly have the time to. I'm like a super busy uh, full-time student. I pay a full adult rent um, and then I want to make these awesome videos for you guys and myself. So thank you guys for being a part of that and I really hope that we can form a beautiful community here. Uh, I put a link in the description for a website called Redbubble, who pretty much takes art and prints it on things for creators, um, which is really convenient for me because I don't have a, like a budget to create merch, um, but if you guys want merch, uh, that can totally be a thing through this awesome thing called Redbubble where they print it and give me a percentage of the margin and then hopefully one day we'll be able to you know move past that to get larger margins uh, but anyways um check it out uh there's loads of awesome items on there uh i really like their mugs but i kind of wish they printed black insides but that's just me um anyways I hope you guys are having a great, great, great day, and I'm just so excited to be here, and that you're here, and I love you. Bye!